All right, so welcome everyone to the reinforcement, Deep Reinforcement Learning Workshop. Um, this is the first session, it's uh, Reinforcement Learning Basics, so I will only talk very briefly about Deep Reinforcement um, Learning and just um, yeah, go over the basics, which I think will be really good for everyone to have as a foundation so we can um, dive into Deep Reinforcement Learning in the afternoon. And I prepared a little presentation and a little game to go along, so I hope we'll have a lot of fun together. Um, yeah, feel free to interrupt me if you have some questions to what I'm talking about. If you have very general questions, maybe we can move that towards the end of the session just to make sure we get through all the content. And yeah, let's get started. So the this session will mainly be based on the Reinforcement Learning textbook by Sutton and Barto. It's kind of the textbook in the field. Um, the second edition is online for free available. So if something is interesting to you, just check it out, read some more about it. It's really well written, um, very interesting. And then also um, there's a really good lecture series by David Silver online on YouTube on reinforcement learning and um, another good series uh, called the Deep Reinforcement Learning Bootcamp. Um, also available on YouTube. So if this workshop piques your interest, I would encourage you to look into that uh, for some more information. Um, because now I'll cover all everything that they cover in the whole series in just a short crash course. So of course I can't get, get into that much detail with everything. Um, okay. So well, let's see how many people are there. Yeah, let's get started with the with the game part. So I thought since we're talking about reinforcement learning, I'll add a bit of gamification into it and a little bit of reinforcement. Um, it's a little treasure hunt race kind of game. So uh, we will split you into teams of three to four people and I'll have some questions uh, throughout the whole crash course and you'll be able to get some points for answering them right. And whoever whoever wins, I'll buy a beer or beverage of your choice to have a little reward at the end. Um, yeah, also, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you how to study or learn the best, but I would recommend that you take some notes just because I feel like it helps me to uh, resist the urge of checking my emails and getting distracted, especially with online lectures and it might give you a little advantage in the game. There's, I posted a link in the, in the chat, which leads you to the game. And yeah, I'll put up the first question in a moment. So when you're in the breakout room, just get to know each other, pick a group leader, um, and then move one of the little tokens that are here on the side uh, onto the start field. So pick a little token for your group move it on the start field and then you can discuss about the question and um, once you decide on a response just write it down on a sheet of paper or into your group chat um, not into the public one of course and um, yeah maybe we meet back here in about five minutes or so all right i'm just gonna put up the first question here it's just a little test question because i didn't talk about anything yet So maybe some of you got it, but maybe not. So the question was, uh, I have a million of eyes, yet I live in darkness. I have millions of ears, yet only four lobes. I have no muscles, yet I rule two hemispheres. What am I? And um, so for the next questions, um, I can't, I unfortunately can't share my screen in the breakout room. So maybe you can just um, copy it down or take a quick screenshot or something to remember it. I'm really sorry about that. Um, and then it would be good like if you go into the breakout rooms to discuss the question with your team and then decide on an answer for the question. But now I'm just going to give you the answer. So um, the human brain, it has millions of visual and auditory nerves, four lobes, two hemispheres, and it's the only thing Edward Nigma respects. It's just a little joke start question. And um, then once you get the answer, one of you from the team, uh, you can pick one person, 
uh, moves your token one step forward. So since this was just a test, everyone can move their token one step forward on the game board. But for now, let's just get started with the content. Oh, there's a... Uh, oh yeah, how do you join a breakout room? So if you go to more and then uh, join breakout room, right now they are closed, but once they are open, you can select a breakout room. So just select the room of your group um, and join it. Or if you came late, you just join any breakout room that you like to join. A better one with less people in it. So it's so you can help them a bit. All right. So reinforcement learning, what is it for? It is there to solve problems of sequential decision making. So what does this mean? So basically we have an environment and the environment produces certain states. And then these states are sent to an agent. And this agent can then, based on the state of the environment, decide on an action and send the action back to the environment. So there's a closed loop between um, state, see, observing states and deciding on actions and the actions then produce the next state. So it's a sequential process and um, the agent basically has a task to make decisions at every time step. And additionally, in reinforcement learning, we also have a reinforcement signal. So we have rewards, which are uh, emitted by the environment and sent to the agent. And the agent can use these rewards to learn which actions are better than other actions in certain states. So the agent receives states and rewards and then decides on actions and it can optimize its policy, which I'll talk about a lot later, um, to uh, learn an optimal policy to act in the environment. So let's do a really simple example. Um, let's say we have this little grid as an environment. This is our state, we're here. And let's say we also have a rewarding, a reward somewhere here in the environment. And then the agent has uh, a certain number of actions that it can perform in the state. So in this case, it can go up, left, right, or down. Um, the agent has a policy which decides an action based on which state it is in. So let's say now it decides to go right. After the action is sent to the environment, the agent uh, is in a new state. So now it's here. It perceives the state and based on that state, it decides on the next action, which for example, in this case, can be to go down. Um, the sent to the environment again, and the agent appears in a new state, which in this case would be the rewarding state. And uh, it could also be a terminal state. So it could be that now it resets or it can just keep exploring and look for more rewards. And this is a, sequential, a task of sequential decision-making and um, that's why this is over time. And to solve such a task, we can use a reinforcement learning. And that's what I'll be talking about um, today, how to solve these tasks, what are different ways to solve this. Okay, what are some examples of sequential decision-making tasks? So for example, um, playing tic-tac-toe, playing other games like chess, checkers, backgammon, go, uh, playing video games like Atari, uh, the famous uh, deep reinforcement learning paper, or more recently um, Dota, beating humans in esports games. Um, then of course robotics, um, a bit more abstract, maybe advertising, so deciding in which order to show which ads to what people, um, energy planning and smart grids, um, elevator control, so if there are these and these button presses on those floors, where to go first, where to go next, and there, for example, reinforcement learning um, has, uh, has given better solutions than just hard coding some rules. And I don't know, can you think of some more examples? I was just thinking that any kind of non-one-shot learning decision-making task can be sort of approached using reinforcement learning. Yes. Yeah, 
right? So anything where you have to decide on certain actions can be defined in the reinforcement learning setting. So for example, um, I mean, you can go in all kinds of fields. You can say healthcare, for example, which treatments to give to patients in what order, um, finance at the stock market, uh, when to buy, when to sell. It's also a sequential decision-making process. Yeah, can you think of anything else? I think actually oh. like all the um, optimization procedures, like already something like a gradient descent is actually also um, in itself a decision process. Yes, very, very, uh, very interesting um, point. So I will actually talk about that somewhat tomorrow that, uh, well, in reinforcement learning, we actually do perform gradient ascent and um, the kind of backpropagation algorithm um, used in uh, supervised neural networks can actually be replaced with reinforcement learning mechanisms. So yeah, very good point. Anyone else? Right, yeah, so I guess it, just any optimization problem that goes over time, like Fabian said, um, you can also think of self-driving cars in the future, in navigation systems, finding the shortest path somewhere, um, and like also uh, team games or uh, competitive games like poker, where they are actually partially obs observable states. And yeah, you can think of many more applications. And in this case, we talk about associative reinforcement learning, which means that uh, different actions are optimal in response to different states. So if we would be talking about non-associative reinforcement learning, there would be just one optimal action independent of which state we are in. Um, that's not so interesting. So we'll talk about associative reinforcement learning here. Okay. And reinforcement learning is at the intersection of many different fields. So the term reinforcement learning was first, first mentioned by Minsky in 1954 in his PhD dissertation and it is kind of a combination of the study of uh, learning from trial and error in psychology and optimal control which is uh, usually not including learning but trying to find an optimal um, control policy um, and optimal control includes for example dynamic programming which I'll be talking about next. Um, in psychology we have uh, very early uh, 1911, the law of effect mentioned by Thorndike, uh, then later on Pavlov and Skinner with classical and operant conditioning, uh, we have study of habitual and goal-directed behavior, cognitive maps, um, and then we also have uh, neuroscience, which uh, put forward a couple of hypotheses like the Rascola-Wagner model to explain animal behavior, um, also the TD model inspired by TD learning from reinforcement learning. So there the relationship goes both ways. Uh, reinforcement learning inspires models to explain behavior or observed behaviors explained by reinforcement learning models. Um, there's the reward prediction error hypothesis and the dopamine and basal ganglia model. Basically, um, there's a lot of evidence that the brain might be implementing something similar to reinforcement learning mechanisms. I'll be talking about that a lot more tomorrow morning. Um, there's Hebbian learning, so neurons that fire together, wire together. Um, and then also the idea of a neural actor critic, that an actor critic, which um, Leon will be talking in the afternoon, might be actually implemented in the brain, uh, in the striatum. Um, so yeah, uh, some really interesting intersections between these fields and uh, they're drawing inspiration from each other. So it's uh, super cool and interesting. I'll talk more about the intersections with psychology and neuroscience tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah, today I'll mainly talk about um, optimal control and um, yeah, of course, there are also intersections with AI. So in general, statistical learning, finding a predictive function based on data uh, learning from experience, and then also in deep reinforcement learning using neural networks um, to deal with high-dimensional state spaces. Okay, 